Welcome back to News Geelong. This week, the federal government, through Corangamite MP Sarah Henderson, in conjunction with the Assistant Minister for Employment, Mr Luke Hartsiker, visited Deakin University for a briefing and an announcement of future funding for Bowen Health's Geelong Centre of Emerging and Infectious Diseases Centre. News Geelong attended the visit for this report. Sarah, a very special announcement. Uh, well, of course, Rollo, it's great to be here with the Assistant Minister for Employment, Luke Hartsuka. Um, and today we are celebrating our $3 million investment in G-Seed, um, the Geelong Centre for Emerging Infectious Diseases. And this, I guess, is symbolic of our government's commitment to innovation and to jobs. And, uh, of course, employment, as we all know, in Geelong is just so important. And it's fantastic to have the Assistant Minister here today to look at what we're investing in and to look at our focus on growing jobs for the future, particularly in, in science, in innovation, in research and development. Luke, welcome to Geelong. Look, thank you, and it is a pleasure to be here with the very hard-working member, Sarah Henderson, a, a member who's very focused on job creation and a world-class facility such as this will play a very important role, not only in producing high-quality research, but in broadening the employment base in the Geelong region. So it's great news for our scientific research and health research, but it's great news for local jobs in the ongoing phase, but particularly in the construction phase, where this project will create in excess of 100 jobs. So it's it's a terrific announcement. And Sarah, where in particular will the, uh, the building be placed? It will be placed in uh, Bowen Health's building in the, in the city and so they're utilising their existing building and modifying that and building new laboratories and really bringing uh, the centre together in one location um, but also utilising the expertise of uh, you know scientists right throughout the Geelong and greater region. So this is a great opportunity to build on our existing expertise in science and innovation and of course as the Assistant Minister has said today um, it is fantastic for jobs. Luke, you are very correct. We are very proud of Sarah and the way in which she's championing the factor of employment here in Geelong. Uh, and, and we seem to be in a diverging sort of uh, phase in Geelong, moving away from manufacturing. And this is another step in the world of in significant technology and research improvements. Well, what this facility does is it provides an investment in an area, research, where we have a distinct competitive advantage. We have a highly educated workforce, a motivated workforce. We have expertise and skills in this area. This allows us to build on our strengths, which is what the Geelong region and the country more generally needs to do. We need to be aware that we are in a changing world with changing uh, employment uh, uh, pinch points, as it were, so we need to move into new areas and uh, expand those areas which we are already in, which have a, an appropriate competitive advantage, and this project certainly fits the bill in that regard. Thank you very much to Sarah Henderson and to the Assistant Minister for Employment, Mr Luke Hartsiker. Thank you very much for being here and again, welcome to Geelong. Thank you. Thank you and very much, Rollo. Sarah, before we let you go, yes. we've got uh, a lot more coming up and we can expect News Geelong to be with you covering any positive announcement again coming to the forefront in our great city. Rollo, News Geelong is a very important part of our community and I'll be looking forward to working with you every step of the way. Of course, we've got our economic review panel sitting in Melbourne tomorrow and I'm a member of that of that uh, panel. So in terms of manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, our government is so focused on, on supporting innovation and investment and uh, I look forward to you uh, being with us every step of the way. Joining us on News Geelong with today's important announcement, from Professor Martin Jego, the Director of Geelong Centre of Emerging and Infectious Diseases. Welcome Professor and uh, again a very insightful in introduction to our decision makers in the world of funding for research and development. Yes, isn't it important that we do get the right sort of funding in to make things happen? Uh, the centre here in, in Geelong, the Geelong Centre for Emerging Infectious Diseases, has been growing nicely, um, but it needed this in, an additional injection of capital to really get it to where we And that is a, a centre that can help understand better and reduce the risk from emerging infectious diseases. A lot of us wind our clock back as, uh, as Geelong people and we uh, well remember Ward 11 up in uh, what is now uh, in Ballerine Street uh, was the infectious disease ward. We've come an extremely long way in the way in which we've been able to work on infectious diseases, know a lot more about them. 
absolutely. Things have changed profoundly. Uh, one of the things that's changed for Geelong, of course, uh, was the establishment by CSRO of the High Containment Laboratory in Geelong, the Australian Animal Health Laboratory. And that's the best in the world. That's the leading institute of this type in the world. And it enables us to work with some of the nastiest diseases in a very safe environment so we can better understand them and then develop the vaccines or the therapeutics we need to combat them. So a real fillip for, for Geelong to have that centre there and to have all that new technology in place here. We spoke to the uh, Assistant Minister of Employment. Uh, yes, it creates jobs and uh, job opportunities, but at the same time, it also, from a professional viewpoint, it attracts new students, which have been uh, a record high here at uh, our proud Deakin University into the world of research. Absolutely. The medical school, in fact, has done extraordinarily well in attracting medical students here. But what we've got here in Geelong is something a little bit unique, and that is an approach that says, instead of dealing with the diseases as if they're human diseases, or animal diseases or disease of wildlife, let's put them all together because most of these diseases now emerge from our wildlife into our domestic animals and threaten human beings. And if we're going to work properly with them, we have to get the vets and the medics, the wildlife, the social scientists working together. And that's what this Geelong Centre does and Deakin University is ideally placed to make that happen. And will it be a pace setter of the other centres in the world of this type? They're, they're coming, but in fact I think we're leading the way on a global basis. I've had the opportunity to, to visit a number of centres listed growing like this uh, elsewhere, and I think the one down in Geelong is globally unique. I think we've taken the first step, and I think others will follow. Does our curriculum in our uh, universities and our, our, our higher schools lead towards uh, people being wanting to take research into a, a curriculum stream and a career stream? We've got to change the way we do things and we had a very interesting meeting up in Canberra just before Christmas where we looked at what are the specialised educational requirements we need to do a One Health approach to infectious diseases and that meeting working with a number of universities in Australia, not just Deakin, was able to map out the sort of things we need in the curriculum. Again, a global first and we've seen other people around the world start looking at that data and start changing the way they're going to teach it. So yes, we do need to change a little bit, but yes, we also know how to do that. And we're learning how to do that. And thank you to all involved in the special visit and briefing. Another progressive forward step for Geelong on the world stage. This is News Geelong as we go to a break and return with Alex Tigatagani and our sports report. Be back shortly.